My name's Charlie Taylor, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. So I was in Japan for just under a year, so I was selected to be a part of this program to invite foreign chefs to learn about the traditional culture and cuisine. In Japan, they really sort of nail that whole less is more ethos and style of food. So just letting the ingredients speak for itself. For me, when you create dishes, it's, it's about nostalgia, it's about dishes I've thought of from working in different restaurants all over the world. It's quite a personal thing, I think, creating a menu. So nice to work in this restaurant. Just cook for eight people a night, it's myself and Nico. So it's almost like we're throwing a dinner party every night for eight people. So my name's Charlie Taylor. Uh, I work at Outless Restaurant in Soho. It's part of the Simon Reagan Group. Uh, it's a small chef's table sort of vibe. Just cook for eight people in the evening. 15, 16 course taste menu. So today we're cooking a little nori tartlet. So it's a great canapé. Uh, it's a crispy nori seaweed filled with some scallops, scallop roe, pickled cucumber, and then we're just gonna top it in, in trout roe as well. So first up, I'm gonna marinate the trout roe. So we get this ponzu. So ponzu is a Japanese seasoning. It's like soy sauce and yuzu juice together almost. And what that does, it's gonna cure it, uh, take a little bit of that sort of fishy flavor away from it as well. You literally just put enough in of the trout roe into the ponzu until it almost just covers it. Give that a little stir. And that trout is going to really soak up the ponzu and cure it as well, get a nice pop. Rose marinating. Next up, we're going to hit the scallops. Uh, so we're getting these beautiful scallops from uh, Orkney Arts in Scotland. So we're just going to take the scallops out of the shell, just insert it through the top, give it a little twist until you hear that pop. This is probably the dangerous bit because you're actually cutting towards your fingers. So I might not suggest this. I've seen people do this on the table. And then that still opens up the scallop in the same way. So I'm just giving these scallops a little bit of a wash, take off any membranes, and we'll just pat them dry. So we're actually gonna use the roe or the scallop as well. Amazing flavor in it. So we're actually gonna salt, cure, and smoke this as well. Here's one I made earlier. Uh, so you see the sort of difference between the two. It's almost in the style of butaga, that Italian cured fish roe. It's a nice sort of natural way of sort of seasoning for that as well. So next up with the scallops, I'm just gonna light, really delicately dice them. The dice doesn't need to be perfect because it's all going to be hidden and mixed amongst other tasty things. And then we're going to be mixing it with some diced pickled cucumber as well. Uh, so these are actually from our farm in the Lake District. It's called Our Farm. Um, supplies fruits, vegetables, flowers, microherbs, all that kind of stuff just for us in the Simon Rogan restaurants. So the guys made, made a lot of, or grew a lot of cucumbers and didn't know what to do with them. So they, they pickled them down and made these delicious, almost gherkin style pickled cucumbers. The guys spent a lot of, lot of time growing them, looking after them, preserving them, pickling them down. So we always try and make sure we use everything that gets sent down from the farm to us. Obviously with a big tasting menu such as ours, so it's 14, 15, sometimes up to 16 courses. We don't have a printed menu, we have a QR code. And if the farm runs out of an ingredient, then we change the menu and we change the dish. And I'm always speaking to, to Farmer John, our head farmer. As a chef in London, to have that close contact with a farmer in the Lake District, like it's amazing, no other chefs get that that sort of close connect connectivity with, with someone as knowledgeable as him, I think. So very lucky in that respect. So next up, some Granny Smith apple. Just some dice, really simple dice. This is gonna add a really nice, amazing, fresh acidity, a little touch of sweetness to the dish as well. I'm not gonna peel it. I like the texture of the skin running through it. So that goes in our little pot with the scallops and the pickled cucumber from our farm. And I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge and we're gonna start the, the base of the, the canopy. So it's the nori tartlet. It's got some nori squares. So we always do three layers in, in a star almost. We dip it in, so this liquid is a dashi stock. So we cooked kombu, which is the seaweed, and katsubushi flakes, smoked binito flakes. So from the crispy, crispy nori sheets, it makes them really pliable so we can actually mold them into the shape that we want. So we've got these beautiful little tart molds, very cute. So we're just gonna sandwich it in between the two. So what that does is gonna, because we're gonna be deep frying them, it's just gonna hold its shape. So I've just done three there. So it's at 150 degrees. And we're just gonna deep fry this very slowly. Normally it takes about three minutes, which is a bit of a long time, but I can assure you it's worth it, that sort of crispy flavor you get from it. So we hold it together with the tongs when it's in the oil. Uh, otherwise it's just gonna dance all over the place. And then you won't have nice, those nice cups. We're, we're after those cups that stay really crispy so they can hold all the scallops. So the nori tuts just come out of the fryer. They're still a little bit pliable when they're warm. So they've just crisped up. 
And they look nice, they, they, they look, I mean, they've crisped up, they do look nice, but we're just gonna smart them up a little bit further. And we're just gonna run the, run the scissors round, just to really sharpen up these tarts. So now we're, now we're assembling the, the canapé effectively. Uh, so we have the scallop mix to get it out of the mix up so you get a nice even dis distribution of the apple, cucumber, scallop. Hit that with a little touch of salt. And then a little touch of rapeseed oil. So this is a raw rapeseed oil from Duchess Farm. And we've got some shiso cress as well. That again is grown on our farm. It's a Japanese mint effectively, but just a lot more fragrant, a lot more intense. And then we have our scallop rope. So we're just gonna grate some in and it's amazing color. And for me, it's just, it's, it makes sense, right? To season the scallop with more scallop instead of too much salt. Give that another little mix. And now we're assembling. So, so good mixture of the apple, cucumber, scallop in there. So you wanna make sure you've got a, a little bit of everything for this little bite. So there's texture, certainly different flavors in there. The acidity from the pickled cucumbers, the fresh sweetness from the Granny Smith apples and the scallops, amazing sweetness from the scallops as well and then sort of a really vibrant, fresh tones from the shiso. I mean, so that's a delicious flavor bomb as it is, but we're just gonna amplify it even further with some of the marinated trout roe. So you can see after that marination, this trout roe is, the, the eggs have come really firm, really vibrant in each of their own little bites. So I'm using, I'm using trout roe just because I think it's, it's an amazing product. The texture it lends to this, this bite really, really amplifies and it just gives a completely different texture Visually, it looks amazing as well, but first and foremost, flavor for me is always is always up there. And then again, just to top it off, we get another variety of shiso cress. Again, this is grown on our farm in some polytunnels, just for a little bit of flair on top. So here we have a great little snack, crispy nori seaweed tartlet with Orkney scallops, some pickled cucumber, some Granny Smith apple, and then some beautiful marinated trout roe, so that great popping as well. Mm -hmm.